Hello, today what we are going to do is I am going to teach you the method of completing the square. Now completing the square is a new method and the point of it is sometimes we will start with an equation that looks like this. Now at this point we have learned two methods for solving a quadratic equation. The first method is the zero product property. And remember that's when you factor a quadratic equation and then you set each of its factors equal to zero. Well, if we look at this problem, are there any factors of seven that would add up to six? Well, we know seven is a prime number, so it's just one times seven, and that does not add up to six. So therefore, the zero product property would not work. Hmm. Well, we've learned another method, maybe that will work, and that is the using the square root property. And with the square root property, what we do is we rewrite the quadratic as a perfect square. So it's a quantity squared equal to a constant. So what we would need to do is we would need to rewrite this as a perfect square. So like for example, x squared plus 6x could equal negative 7. So we have the variables isolated on one side equal to a constant. But is x squared plus 6x a perfect square? When we factor it, well, it has an x in common, so it would be x times x plus 6 equals negative 7. This is not a perfect square. So therefore, as it is written, we cannot use the perfect square form. perfect square. Because if you look at this left side here, if we were to factor it, does it factor to become a perfect square? No, it doesn't. So we need to do something. Something needs to be done. So in order to explain this concept, I'm going to use algebra tiles. Now, if you remember from a long time ago, this large blue square, that represents an x squared because it has a dimension of x by x. And the green rectangles, if you remember, the green rectangle represents the variable x because it has a dimension of 1 by x. And last of all, the yellow square, and I'll use my yellow pen, although you won't be able to see it very well. The little yellow, oh, that's red, <laughs> I told you, wait, yellow is 1 by 1, which represents a of 1. Okay, well, let's get going. So what we need to do is we need to create a square or complete a square. So if I look at the left side, I have an x squared, right, because I have 1x squared, and then I have 4x's, 1, 2, 3, 4, is equal to a positive 2. So on the left side, can I move these tiles in such a way to create a square? Well, we know a square has equal dimensions. So if I take the 4 and divide it by 2, because that way it's two sides to a square, so now I have 2x's on each side of the x squared. And we know that the dimensions of our x squared is x by x. And then here, on the left side, we have 1 and 1, so we have x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 2. So you can see the length and width are equal, but it's not a complete square because we've got a gap there, a hole. So what must I add to this diagram to make a perfect square? What would fit in here? Do you see what I see? I see that 4 ones would make a perfect square. But you know if we add 4 to one side, then we must add 4 to the other side of the equation to keep it equivalent. So what just happened here? Well, I started off with x squared plus 4x was equal to 2. And what did I do? Well, I took this 4 and I divided it by 2, right? 
so that I'd have equal sides on each side of the square. And then to fill in these four ones, how did I know it before? Well, because you've got two by two. Well, two by two, if you square that, two times two, that is four units. Now I had to add the same thing to this side. So I had the four x's, divided it by two, and then squared that number to get the missing x's. So now what I have created, I have created a perfect square on the left side because it's x plus 2 squared is equal to 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4 is equal to 6. Yay, we have just completed the square. Let's try another example and see if you're getting the hang of it. So again, we now have an equation where it's 1x squared plus 8x is equal to the constant. So my job is to create a perfect square. What must I add to both sides of the equation to make a perfect square? Well, we know that a square, again, has equal dimensions. So since I have 8x's, I would want to put 4 on one side and 4 on the other side. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the 8 and dividing it by 2 because a square has two dimensions. Okay, so now we have x plus 4 and x plus 4. Well, what must I add here in this section to make it a complete square? Well, you notice it's 4 here and it's 4 here. So 4 times 4, so that means I would need to add 16 little squares. Or another way of saying it is I took the 8 x's and divided it by 2. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. And then I squared that number. So I added 16 to both sides. Well, if I add 16 to the left side, then I must add at 16 to the right side. So have I created a perfect square? You betcha. Because now if I look at the left side, I have the quantity x plus 4 squared is now equal well, 16 minus 3 is 13. So now we have a perfect square. Now let's go ahead and solve this just to make sure you remember how to do this. So we would take the square root of both sides, and I get the absolute value of x plus 4, because we know that the square root of a quantity squared is its absolute value, and that equals the square root of 13. Okay, now we have to undo the absolute value. So we have x plus 4 is equal to plus or minus radical 13 and subtract 4 from both sides. So we get the lovely negative 4 plus or minus radical 13. And we know this to be an irrational number. Fantastic. I think we've got one more in store for you to build. Yes, we do. Now, if you were watching this video because you were absent, I would press pause now and see if you could do this on your own. Okay, how did you do? Let's work this together. Now, if you look at this quadratic equation, it's a little different than the ones we've seen in them previously. Because previously, the variables have been on one side of the equation, and it's equal to the constant. Well, it's necessary that we do write that in the form. So the first step of completing the square will always be to have x squared plus 6x, the variable terms, isolated on one side of the equation, set equal to a constant. So if I subtract 2 from both sides, I get a negative 2. So that means we're going to subtract 2 on the left side. So I'm going to subtract the 2. And then we must also then put 2 negative over here. Okay? Now we have to complete the square. So hopefully I think you're getting the feel of it. So since we have 6 x's and the square has 2 dimensions, well, it has 4 sides, right? But 2 dimensions, length and width. So we're going to divide the 6 by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then how do we figure out what number of squares to add to make it a perfect square? Well, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so we're going to add a 3 squared right there in the middle. So it was x squared plus 6x, and we're adding a 3 squared. Well, if we add a 3 squared to the left side, then we must add a 3 squared to the right side. So voila, we have now created a perfect square. It's x plus 3 squared is equal and 9 minus 2 is 7. So now we can take the square root of both sides and solve this quadratic equation. Now, I want to see how they figured out this whole process of completing the squares. So could you...
So would you please pause the video, write your statement, and then I'll write one with you, okay? Welcome back. Now, so the first thing we always did when we were completing the square is we first have to isolate, or actually, we can write, I'd like to write it this way instead. I just changed my mind, sorry about that. So what we are going to do is basically in all the problems, we would have 1x squared plus the linear term bx would be equal to the constant. So we must rewrite the equation so that you have 1 quadratic term with a coefficient of 1. Because remember, we always want it either just to be a 1x squared or a 1b squared or a 1z squared. So we can build that squared. The coefficient, oops, I misspelled that because I was talking while writing. That's what happens. Coefficient of 1 plus the linear term set equal to the constant. Okay. Beautiful. Now that we have the problem set up properly, now we have to create the square. And if you remember, every time what I would do is I would take this coefficient of the linear term. So take the coefficient of the linear term. Divide it by 2. it by 2. So we would take the b, divide it by 2, and then square it. Okay. Add the result to both sides. Now you have created a problem and the result to both sides. Let me finish writing first <laughs> before I start talking <laughs> to both sides. Now you have rewritten your quadratic equation so it is now a perfect square. So now you can factor it and write it as a perfect square and take the square root of both sides. Voila. Now that is it for the first lesson of completing the square.